It's been a while since I've tackled any Age of Sigmar content on this channel, let alone any conversion videos set within the Mortal Realms. However, a few of you have been making requests, so I thought it's time to dip into a bit of fantasy once again. I'm Pete the Wargamer, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to convert Zinch marked Chaos Warriors. The Chaos Warriors I used here were the more up-to-date ones found inside the Star Collecting Slaves of Darkness set. They are single pose, which did make the conversion process slightly trickier, but nothing that can't be worked around. So, I started by clipping away all the components required to build one of the Chaos Warriors, before going on to clean up any mold lines or sprue tabs using my knife. With the components prepped, I could begin the conversion. The first that needed to be removed was the huge Chaos Undivided Star emblazoned across the shield. If these warriors were marked by Zinch, then any symbolism should be directed solely to him. I approached this task in two steps. First, I began by using my knife to very carefully shave away chunks of the star. This was done just a little bit at a time to avoid having to apply too much pressure, which could cause accidents like cutting your finger, or even worse, damaging the model. Once the bulk of the star had been removed, I took out my file to smooth out the uneven surface left behind after my knife work. Try to use the file to maintain the ridge down the center of the shield as you do this, as it can be quite easy to remove it as the star is shaved away, but it's important to try and get it back. Once complete, I was left with a bare shield like this, ready for my own iconography. For the sword, I needed to replace it with something that was much more distinctly Zinchian in its appearance. Thankfully, there are already a couple of good choices to source our components from. Both Zangors and Karak Acolytes have swords which are great for our needs. Personally, I've chosen the latter of these two. However, regardless of which kit is used, the method for replacing your Chaos Warrior's weapon remained the exact same. I began by using my knife to cut away the Chaos Warrior's sword from the hand. I wanted to focus on keeping the hand as neat as possible, so I was careful not to cut too close to it. I repeated this for the pommel and then began cleaning up the top and bottom of the hand to create a flat surface ready for gluing. Similarly, for the Karak Acolyte sword, I made a cut just above the hand, getting as close as possible to the hand so that I didn't damage the cross guard this time around. Again, the pommel was removed too before cleaning up the cuts on both of these removed parts. At this stage, I had my two sword parts and an empty hand. These parts needed to be fixed together, but glue alone wouldn't be strong enough, and the sword would likely get knocked and fall apart pretty easily. So I decided to pin the sword to the hand instead. I began by drilling a 1mm wide hole directly through the hand, where the sword handle would have been. Once the hole had been drilled, I then proceeded to drill holes into each of the sword halves. These were a little trickier because the pieces were quite narrow, but I took my time and carefully drilled the holes into the direct center, going as deep as the piece would allow, without drilling out of the other side of course. Once the holes had been drilled, I could actually start the pinning process. This involved taking a length of fairly soft steel wire that was also 1mm in thickness. I applied a little super glue to the tip and pushed the wire through the hand so that only a couple of millimeters were left protruding. After giving this a little time to dry, I then cut away the rest of the wire with my clippers, again leaving just a few millimeters poking out both ends. With the pins in place, I could apply more super glue to each side of the wire and then attach the sword halves accordingly, holding them in place until the glue had a chance to set. This left me with a much more Zinchian looking blade that was much sturdier than if I had just used plastic glue to attach the pieces. With the saw completed, I then went ahead and assembled the miniature's torso and arms together using the components that I removed earlier on. Now that I had the torso and the arms completed, I needed to give my warrior a suitable helmet. However, instead of sourcing a head from a different kit, I decided to modify one of the helmets that comes with the Chaos Warrior kit instead. 
I began by using my clippers to remove any large details to the helmet, such as these horns, before smoothing flat the points where the horns or other details met the helmet, and I did this using my knife. Similarly, any other surface features such as rivets or other details should also be removed at this stage, leaving you with a smooth helmet. At this point, the head is mostly featureless, but I want a completely clever helmet with no openings or features, which means that the eye slots need to be filled in. To do this, I use some of the Lux Materials Perfect Putty. However, other putties like Milliput or Liquid Green Stuff could be used instead. I took a very small amount on the tip of my sculpting tool and pressed this into the eyes, ensuring that the gap had been completely filled. Then I wet my finger to prevent the putty from sticking to it and then wiped this across the eyes. This helped to remove any excess putty from the surface, leaving just the gap filled. This left me with a head that had the eyes filled in and while the putty should dry fairly quickly, I left this alone for several hours to give the putty a good chance to fully dry before I moved on to the next step. As I wanted to ensure that the helmet remained as featureless and as blank as possible, after leaving the putty to fully cure, I set about filing down the surface of the face. This helped to further smooth out any protruding putty from the eyes, helping it to better blend into the rest of the helmet. Once completed, I was able to glue the helmet into place. Now, whilst for any other army, a fully enclosing helmet with no holes to see out of would be a bit of a hindrance, for the forces of Zinch, we can easily explain it away with their sight being granted through dark gifts or some other mutation. Either way, the result was an unusual look, perfect for Zinch marked warriors. Now, it wouldn't be a Pete the Wargamer conversion tutorial if I didn't find some way to crowbar in some dead animal bits. My dab of choice today was the small bird skull found in the Citadel skull set. With birds being a big part of Zinch symbology, having a small avian influence like this glued to the model's belt was a quick and easy way to show his allegiance. So go ahead and use your plastic glue to attach it to wherever you see fit. Another easily identifiable attribute of the followers of Zinch are their scrolls, books, and other tomes of forbidden knowledge. So I was keen to add something like this to my model. I opted for a piece of parchment from the Free Guild Flagellants Kit, another excellent source of books and scrolls and other interesting conversion components. As I will be attaching this to the now featureless face of the shield, I needed to file down the back of the parchment a little in order to account for the shield's curve. I tested the fit periodically as I did this, ensuring that I wasn't filing away too much at any one time. Once I was happy with how everything was fitting together, I brought in my glue and fixed the parchment to the shield. And with that, the model was complete. All that was needed was a basing scheme and a suitable paint job, which left me with this. Here we have the completed Zinch marked Chaos Warrior, who I painted in the colors of the God of Change which incidentally, I'll be publishing a tutorial for very soon. So if you're watching this on the day of release, you'll have a little bit to wait, but if you're watching this in the future, chances are it's already live and you'll find a link to it in the description. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, it's been a while since I've tackled any Age of Sigmar content, and this is my first Age of Sigmar kit bash video, which makes a nice change of pace from my normal 40K guides. And if you enjoyed it, please do let me know and I will look to create more Age of Sigmar conversions as well as fleshing out the other three Chaos Gods as well. Now for this tutorial, I was able to keep the number of components down as well, with the sword probably being the hardest part to get a hold of separately. However, you can quite easily create something Zinchian by just smoothing out the helmet and the shield along with gluing on a few readily available scrolls. So. As always, I just want to say a big thank you to all of my supporters and the folks who use my affiliates links. If you would like to help me out with making these videos, you can support me on Buy Me A Coffee as a one-off or as an ongoing membership. And you can find a link to that below. Your help is always greatly appreciated. And if you like this video, then check out my other conversion guides and please do consider subscribing. And so until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.